Hello everyone and welcome to this course on the NVIDIA Jetson. I am Brandon on behalf of TIEUP and today we shall talk about some useful libraries that we will be using throughout this course. And we will also see how we can install them on our Jetson. Let's get started. In this lecture, we will discuss some popular libraries, including OpenCV, PyTorch and Torch Vision. We'll start with the installation of Python along with some other supporting libraries. Luckily, the image provided by NVIDIA already contains Python 3.6 with most of the supporting libraries, including NumPy, Matplotlib, etc. It also has OpenCV installed inside it, but the problem is that OpenCV is not built with CUDA support. So therefore, we have to install the CUDA-enabled OpenCV library from scratch. Thereafter, we will move on to the other two main libraries, which are PyTorch and TorchVision. Before doing all that, let's discuss a little bit about these libraries. Open Source Computer Vision, abbreviated as OpenCV, is one of the largest libraries designed to implement the mathematics of computer vision. It was initially released in 2000 and was upgraded over time with the latest functionalities. The most recent version available at the time of this recording is 4.5.4 that contains around 2,500 algorithms, both traditional and state-of-the-art. OpenCV comes with support for CUDA, making it capable of running machine learning algorithms on its GPU. Cool, so that was a quick introduction of OpenCV. Let's now discuss another popular library that we are going to use throughout this course, which is PyTorch. PyTorch is another famous library provided by Facebook that was released in 2016. PyTorch was especially designed to efficiently perform machine learning or deep learning math. PyTorch uses tensors as the input-output parameters. Tensors are similar to NumPy's n-dimensional arrays, except tensors execute directly on the GPU. Due to these capabilities and its ease of use, PyTorch became the most popular choice from the AI community during the last few years. Before PyTorch, TensorFlow was the most commonly used library for the implementation of machine learning math. However, TensorFlow was quite difficult to implement, especially when it came to the customization of low-level functions. But still, it had quite a large community. Keras is another famous library, which actually came with the back-end support of TensorFlow, which made it easy to use because it worked as an API and helped provide the AI community with a flexible use of TensorFlow. However, being an API, it did not provide direct control to the low-level functions of TensorFlow. So, PyTorch solved all these problems by providing a user-friendly platform to machine learning users that can easily customize the low-level functions according to their needs. From the given survey, we can see how the people's preferences rapidly changed from Keras or TensorFlow to PyTorch during the last two years. Another important library that comes with PyTorch is Torch Vision. It is specially designed for computer vision problems that are related to machine learning with the assistance of PyTorch. Since it is part of PyTorch, it already has the support on the GPU. It also contains several image datasets, including MNIST, CIFAR, COCO, and many other important datasets that can be used to train the machine learning models. It also contains several pre-trained models, including ResNet, Inception, GoogleNet, etc., which can be used to further train the built-in datasets or with their custom datasets as well. So that was a quick overview of some of the important libraries that we are going to use in this course. Now let's move on to the Jetson where we can see how to install these libraries and set up our Jetson for the execution of machine learning models. Okay, so we have started our Jetson and now we will start with the installation process in which we will install the required libraries that we have discussed so far. But before installing them, I want to mention here that I have already created an image on which all the required libraries have already been installed. So you don't need to waste a lot of time on the installation process. You can simply flash this image directly on your Jetson. This image can be found in the description of this lecture, so you can download it from there. However, you can also follow the instructions given in this lecture if you want to set up your Jetson by yourself. So if you're using the given image which I've provided, just move onto this drive, open it up, and inside you will find a folder named NVIDIA Jetson course. Inside you will find there are around 15 folders here which are the module folders, containing all the materials related to the lectures. In total, we have 15 modules for this course. So I've created 15 folders and each folder contains all the required material that we will be discussing in each module. Currently we are in module three, so we will open module three. Here I have placed the document in which all of these transition commands that you will be using for the installation of libraries are all present. Okay, so here you can see all of the commands. We will go through all of them one by one. 
starting with the system level packages which we will use to update and upgrade our advanced package tool. So let's implement this one by opening up our terminal. Okay, so we will start with the first command. You can simply copy and paste this line. Enter the password and it will update all of the advanced package tools. We will wait for it to complete. There we go, it's done. Let's move on to the next command, which is the upgrade command. First, we need to clear it. Okay, so most of these are already upgraded, so we don't need to upgrade them. And now we will move on to the next part in which we will install some system level dependencies. So if you're using the latest version of the developer kit provided by NVIDIA, we will find that most of the libraries will already be installed. So let's try them one by one. You do actually have to check all of them to make sure that you don't miss any. So for example, we try the first one. And it says that it's already installed. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, so this one is also installed. So we move to the next one. Okay, this one is also installed. The next one is also installed. Right, let's try this one. Cool, so it's also installed. I think all of them are already present, but we do have to just check to make sure. Great. So this dependency is also installed. Let's check Cython. Okay, so on to the last one. This process will have saved us a lot of our time. Right, so it is also installed. Now we will download and update CMake, in which you will later use for the installation of OpenCB. So using the wget command, you can download CMake from the given link. You can either download it directly or you can use the wget command to download it. But since I've actually already downloaded it and built it here, I won't download it again. But this is just to explain the process for you. Cool, so if you were able to download it, it would be a zip file, which you would then have to extract, creating a folder like this. From inside the folder, you have to run this command, which will take a little while. And then, using the make command, you have to create the CMake directory, which will take around 20 to 25 minutes. So once this has been completed, we will update our path. So we'll place this path in our bash. So let's make sure that our path is present. Okay, cool, it's done. And this one is fine. It's also done. Let's move on to our next part, which is actually the installation of OpenCV. But before doing that, we make sure to install the supporting libraries for OpenCV. I do believe that all of them will be installed, but we can't risk it, so we need to double check all of them to make sure. Okay, this one is installed. Let's check the next one. Yes, this is also installed. Okay, that's great. These libraries are already present. Nice, I believe this one is also already present. This one is also present as well. So let's try the last one and then we will move on to the OpenCB installation. Great, so we are done with all of the supporting libraries for OpenCB. Let's move on to the next part. So when we are ready to install OpenCB, we will first download OpenCB version 4.1.2. This version contains most of the required features that we will be using in the future lectures. 
However, you can install the latest version as well. But just keep in mind that if you use a package to install OpenCV, you might not be able to install it with full CUDA support. So in order to install OpenCV with CUDA support, we have to install it from scratch, which we will do so in the next lecture. Here, I must also mention one more thing. If you have downloaded the latest version of JDK from the NVIDIA website, Python and OpenCV are already installed and integrated. However, the OpenCV that comes with it is actually not built with CUDA support. That means you have to first uninstall that one and then install this one from scratch. So again, here you would use the wget command to download OpenCV from GitHub, which will be saved as opencv.zip. So to save time, I've already downloaded it here. You can see opencv.zip, as well as the OpenCV contribution items, which I've also already downloaded. So let's unzip it, and then we will move on to the next part. So we clear it first. Just note that it will take a bit of time. Great, it's done. So we clear it. And then we check. Do we have any folders with names of OpenCV? Okay, here we have OpenCV 4.1.2. So before installing it, let's also unzip the OpenCV contribution folder. So copy and paste. Cool, so now we will change the names of our folders. Here we can see our folders, OpenCV 4.1.2 and OpenCV Contribution. So just simply rename this one to OpenCV. And similarly, we will also change the name of this one to OpenCV Contributions. Okay, so these are our main folders. Now let's move on to the next part. We will navigate into the OpenCV folder using cd command. And we will create a directory with a name build because we are going to build all the data in this folder. So we have our directory here with a name build. And let's navigate into the build directory. Okay. Let's create it. Now, in order to check whether you are in the correct folder or not, we use the command pwd. This will then show you which directory that you are currently in. So, we are right now inside the build folder. This is your home directory, and then it's my account, and then it's OpenCV, and that's correct. Great. So the next part is actually the main part in which we will configure our OpenCV with different configurations. For example, here we have GStreamer and CUDA. So it will create a CMake with CUDA support. So let's try this one over here. You have to copy and paste it directly here. So just make sure that you have copied it directly. So this is a configuration through which OpenCV will be installed. So ensure that you have properly copied this and do not change anything if you want it to work with Python 3. Otherwise, if you also want it to work with Python 2, then simply make sure that it states on over here instead of off. I will only be using Python 3, so I'm not going to integrate it with Python 2. We will also be using GStreamer in the later lectures. That is why I've also checked it on here. So let's try this one. Great. So now it's configurating. Once it is complete, then we will move on to the next part. So the next part is actually the make command here. So we'll be running cmake on the configuration we have done. So let's simply copy and paste it. So this is the configuration through which OpenCV will be installed. So you can check it out and make sure that you are not going in the wrong direction and that you have configured it properly. So as you can see, we have disabled the Python 2 and the GUI says yes, it is available. And also, they are the same configuration for video. Parallel Framework is also present. pthreads and our application on NVIDIA says yes, so it will be configured with CUDA. Now, before we start, we just need to clear our terminal first, and now we can start it with the make-j4 command. 
Cool, so we have started building OpenCV from scratch using CMake, and this may take some time. So take this time to grab a cup of coffee or a beverage of your choice, because it's going to take around two to three hours to complete. So just pause the video here and we'll come back when the installation is done. Okay, so finally OpenCV has been built using CMake. Now let's finalize the installation using this command. So it took around 2.5 hours for me. It might be more or less for you. Okay, let's finalize the installation with this command. It won't take too much time. Okay, so we are finally done with the installation of OpenCV. Now let's test whether we have installed OpenCV correctly and that it has CUDA support. So let's clear our terminal. And let's move to the parent directory and clear it again. Great. So please start Python 3 and we will see whether we can import our OpenCV or not. Nice, so it has imported successfully, which means that OpenCV is installed properly. So now let's try to see whether it has been installed with the CUDA support. To do this, we have a function available in OpenCV that allows us to check whether CUDA is enabled or not. Type in cv2.cuda.get CUDA enabled device count. So this will return the number of GPU devices available on your machine. So currently we only have one GPU here. So let's see what it will return. Okay, so it returned one. That means we currently only have one GPU available in Jetson, which is correct. So that means that OpenCV has been successfully installed with CUDA support and it can now be used for different applications to execute any kind of computer vision models in which we would require CUDA. So that was all about the installation of OpenCV. So let's stop here. We are now done building OpenCV from scratch along with the CUDA support. See you in the next lecture. Now let's move on to our next important library for this course, which is PyTorch. So we will start PyTorch now, but before installing this, let's start with its supporting libraries. So we'll start with the first library. Okay, let's first clear our terminal. Great, it has been installed already. Let's install this one as well. Okay, it's also installed. Let's try this one. Okay, it is showing that most of the libraries have already been installed here. But it doesn't mean that the JDK you have already downloaded and deployed on your Jetson will also have all these installed on your device. This means you will have to check all of these commands, including the libraries available on your JDK, and test them, just like how I'm doing, so that you can make sure you are not leaving anything behind. That may take a bit of your time. But at least you will be sure that you have successfully installed everything properly. Okay, so now that we know that everything is installed, let's move on to the PyTorch library. So before installing it, you have to download it from this link. Therefore, you will need gdownload in order to download anything from the Google Drive. So first we will clear the terminal. I have already installed it before, so you can try to download it using this command, gdownload, and provide the link, or you can download PyTorch directly from here, or from the download section of this course. I have already downloaded it, so you can see that it's present here. Therefore, I won't need to run that command. I will simply run this command, so we can simply run it this way, and then our PyTorch will be installed. So let's try this one. Okay, let's clear it first. So it has started processing the PyTorch wheel which we have downloaded. Since it will take some time, I'm going to pause the video here and continue once it is finished. Okay, so our PyTorch library is installed. Now let's move on to our next library, which is the Torch Vision library. 
once again, we also have to install all the prerequisites for the Torch Vision Library. So let's do that first. Okay, these are already installed. This one is also installed. Let's try this one as well. Great, it's also installed. So now you have to download Torch Vision via this link using the same method you used for PyTorch. I've also installed Torch Vision as well to save our time. So since I've already downloaded it, let's run this command to install the Torch Vision library. Once again, we clear our terminal. Nice clean slate. Paste the command here and let's run it. Okay, this took much less time. Cool, so now we are done with all of the important libraries that we require. So let's give it a try and see whether all these libraries are working or not. Let's start with OpenCV. And it is imported. So let's go to PyTorch. PyTorch is referred to as Torch. So let's see whether we can import it. Yes. So Torch is already imported. Finally, let's try Torch Vision. Okay, great. So we have successfully installed all three of the libraries that we will require for this course. So that's all about the installation of these libraries. To conclude, I just want to mention another thing, which is that we cannot do all this coding on the terminal since it is not very user friendly. So for that purpose, we need to install Jupyter Notebook. Maybe most of you are already familiar with Jupyter Notebook, which is actually a very good editor in which you can save all of your code in one place. I have already installed Jupyter Notebook, but if you have not yet installed it, you can simply use this command. Run it and Jupyter Notebook will be installed. Once you are done installing it, then you can open it using the command Jupyter Notebook. Right, it will then open in the browser. You can then create a new notebook using Python 3. And you can give it any suitable name. We are doing testing, so let me rename it as testing. Then we will try to load all three of the libraries in a single cell. So let's try Torch Vision and see if it works. Okay, so there was no error. That means that all three of the libraries have loaded properly which means that they have all been successfully installed. So that was the goal of this course. We have successfully installed all three of the libraries, as well as tested that they are integrated with Python. So in the next module, we will discuss these libraries in more detail. We will try some basic functions of OpenCV and PyTorch, and we will also try one of the datasets provided by Torch Vision. Okay, so that's it for this lecture. We will meet again in the next module. Cool, so if you're ready to get started, what you need to do is scroll down and you see that link over there? Yeah, yep, yep, that one. Click over there. It'll take you to a page where you can sign up to get a free preview of the course, type in your name and email, and you can start learning for free. Otherwise, if you're ready for the comprehensive course, we are running a special pre-launch campaign where you'll be able to pre-order Jetson Pro now at early bird prices. You'll also find the hardware requirements there on the enrollment page. Don't waste time, don't let your competition learn this before you do. Enroll now if you're ready to learn the Jetson Pro course. Links are all down below and we'll see you inside the course.